Let's talk about that definition. Uh, what, is a, what do you think a relation is? Start saying that word in seventh, eighth grade. Relation. What do you think it is? Very good, Matthew. It's just a simple set of ordered pairs. It's a set of ordered pairs. Okay? Set of ordered pairs. Good job. In which each member of the domain. What does domain mean? X coordinates. You have to write that definition on the test too. So somewhere you need to put the word domain and put the set of X coordinates. The set of X coordinates. Those are your three definitions you're going to write. Function, domain, and range. Domain, the set, don't, but just put X coordinates. The set of X coordinates. Range is the set of what? Y coordinates. And the way I remember that, when you, alphabetical order, domain comes before range, X becomes before Y, doesn't it? So domain is the set of X coordinates, the range is the set of Y coordinates. Okay. So basically, guys, when you're checking to see if something's a function, X cannot be used more than what? Once. And this is how I think of it. I think a function is like a big machine. Big machine. Okay, and I want you to think pictures. You remember the old, old um, cartoons back in the, you know, you weren't born, but you've watched Scooby Doo, haven't you? I love some Scooby Doo Buzz Bunny. Okay, they don't make the cartoons like that anymore. You know Scooby Doo in the haunted house? Well, wherever he was, he would go in there and, you know, they had that big machine and, you know, you go in an apple and get an apple pie out. For everything you threw in that machine, you got one thing out. That's a function. Like, for instance, let's say I had the function x squared plus 5x. And let's say, okay, ready? Picture this. The number 2 is jumping on the conveyor belt. The rule is x squared plus 5x is the machine. 2 jumps in the machine. If 2 jumps in the machine and we got x squared plus 5x, what would jump out the machine? 14, wouldn't it? 14. One value, wasn't it? That's what a function is. Does that make sense? So everything you work with, so... If you plug a number in a quadrant, you're going to get one answer, aren't you? If you plug it into a quadrant. If you plug it into a polynomial, you're going to get one answer. If you plug a number into a rational, you're going to get one answer. That's what a function is, okay? All right, so let's look at this. So all we're doing today is determining if something's a function. So if I look at number one, all I'm checking for to see is do, do any of my x's repeat? No, so is that a function? Yes. How about number two? No. no. What keeps it from being a function? Yep. All right. I love three and four. These you've never done like this before. So let's think about it. Now, the x value is known as the input value, isn't it? The y is known as the what? Okay, next thing I'm going to ask you. Is x known as the independent or dependent variable? Independent. independent, the y is known as the what? Because your input is independent, but your y is going to be dependent on that x, isn't it? That's why it's called dependent. All right, so let's look at number three. The input value x, that means this is the domain, is a student's ID number. So let's just think of this. So I had a table just like this, okay? And the x were your student's ID number in the X column. Would any of those repeat? No, because every one of you have a different Social Security card, don't you? So would that be a function? Yes. Do you understand why that's a function? Because if I'm looking at the X, if I had a table and the X was your student's ID number, that's your Social Security number, would any of those occur more than once? No, that's why it's a function. Does that make sense? Okay, let's look at four. The input value is the area code, and the output value is a phone number in the area code. Let's think about this. All your phone numbers in the X column is the area code. Would you, would one of you have the same area code? Yes, yeah, so would that be a function? No, does that make sense? Okay. So three would be yes, four would be no.
Okay, so those are. Go ahead, huh? On those? Okay, you're overthinking it. It's talking about this whole group. Okay, so it's talking about, okay, input. If I had more, than, you're not just talking about one ordered pair. You're talking about, okay, if I had a group of ordered pairs and those those things that are in the X column is a student's identification number. That's just talking about yours would be different from everybody's. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. All right. Number five and six. When you're given a graph, you remember using the vertical line test to determine? So on number five, does that pass the vertical line test? Yes. If I took my pen and I went across there, it's not touching more than one spot at one time. How about number six? No. How about number seven? Yes. How about eight? No. So now we've looked at by table, by situation, by graph. The last thing we want to look at is by equation. Okay, by equation. You've never done these like this before. Alright. On these guys, if you want to write something out here by the rule, you want to get y by itself, okay? You want to get your you want to solve for y, okay? So on this right here, I'm going to move this negative two x over. It becomes a positive two x. I'm going to get rid of that square, guys. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Now, the rule in pre cal is when you take the square root of something, when you take the square root of something, when you take the square root of something, you put that plus or what? Okay. I want you to think about something for a minute. Is that a function? I want you to give me a reason. I want you to talk in your group for just a second. Determine is that a function? How many explanation wise? Talk in your group. If I plug, let's say x equals 1. Let's just plug it. Let's have a situation. 2 times 1 is what? 2. 2, two plus 5 is what? 7. I got the plus or minus the square root of 7. So 1 could be with positive square root of 7. 1 could be with negative square root of 7. Do you see that? 1 is being used more than once. It has more than one value assigned to it. That's not a function. That's the only situation. If you don't get this situation, then it's a function. That's the only time it is not a function, okay? And he said, so Mr. Chester, when we see problems like this on our paper, should we assume that there's a plus or minus there? No, you only put that plus or minus when you take the square root, you got me? If you don't see it there, you don't have to worry about it, you got me? Does that make sense? That's for the whole year pre cal Pretty much square root or a root of Yes, but hold on, let's... That's a general question. We're gonna, we're, you're going to see in just a second, okay? But this is not a function. Okay, number 10. Yes, you can look at that and tell that's a function, but you still got to get y by itself, okay? I want y by itself. So y equals negative 6x 
plus 18, I'm going to divide by 3. Y equals negative 2X plus 6. Did I run into that plus or minus situation? No. If I put in X, a value for X, am I going to get one answer? Yes. So that is a function. Now, number 11, I mistyped it, so this is what it should say. That should be number 11, so write that down somewhere. All right, I'm going to get Y by itself. So how can I get under this radical? Mm-hmm. So I got x squared equals 6y. Then I'm going to divide by what? 6. Did I run into a plus or minus situation? So is it a function? Yes, that's a function. That would be yes. All right, number 12. I'm going to divide both sides by what first? Three. three. When I have that, I have x over 3 equals y squared. I'm going to take the square root. When you take the square root, what do you have to think about? Plus or minus. So is that a function? No. no. Okay, number 13. Okay, first of all, on cube roots, on odd roots, do you have plus or minus? No. no. I just want you to know that. Okay, so y cubed equals x plus 4. I take the cube root. So y equals the cube root of x plus 4. So I don't have to worry about plus or minus on odd roots. So is that a function? Yes. Okay. Number 14 is just like 10, and we're not going to work that because you're all intelligent to see that. All right. Right now I'm going to give you... Three minutes, I want you to do one through six at the bottom page. That's part of your homework. You're going to go, gonna go on over that. One through six right now on page one. Do those and then we'll discuss them. So yes or no. And then look up when you're done. Yes, ma'am. Wouldn't that sweet art? No, don't worry about five, six, seven right now. That's actually on page five of your homework. I had it two places. I'm going to save those for your next page. Thank you, though. All right. Number one, it says the input value x is a bank account number, and the output value y is the account balance. So I always think of this chart in my mind. Okay, I got the x, I got the in input values right here. If I went to regions, does any one account have the same account number? No. So is that a function? Yes. yes. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Number two. The input value X is the year. That D in front of the year makes a difference right there. Yeah, so this year is 2018. So that whole column will be 2018. So is that a function? No. Do you see that? Now, if I change to a year, that would be different, wouldn't it? Okay. The is key word there. But I, would, I wouldn't do a year. That would get tricky there.
because you wouldn't know if I repeated years. But the year is very important. Number three, Derek, is that a function? Yes. Yes, because none of the X's are repeated. Number four, Jackson Nolan, is that a function? No. Correct. Number five, um, Mr. Sims, is that a function? Yes. yes. If I asked you to tell me why, what could you put? It passes the what? Vertical line test. Because there are going to be questions on your test next Thursday. Why? I always like why. Not just yes or no. Number six, um, Ms. Wilson, is that a function? No, because it fails the vertical line test. If I had a straight vertical line, guys, like that, X equals something, does that pass the vertical line test? No, because you're touching the whole line at one time, aren't you? But a horizontal, it does, doesn't it? Okay. So, to the, well, so far in this first learning target, before we move to the second one, I can identify functions. We then look at it by situation. You have to think about it. By table. How do you determine something by table? X's cannot be what? Repeated. How about by graph? Line test. How, vertical line test. How about by equation? You solve for and you can't have plus or what? Minus. Are you good so far? See, we can't. We, we slow down now. You see that? Is everybody good with that tempo? We good? Juliet, you good? Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is evaluate. And you did this last year. You remember like f of 3, f of x, all that. Whatever was in the parentheses, you plugged into the function, didn't you? What's in the parentheses is your input value and you're getting your output. So I'm on page 3. So our second learning target is I can evaluate functions. I give you an input value. You're trying to find the output value. So on number 1, I'm not doing anything on this page because that will bore you to death. I'm just picking some. Let's see which ones I pick. Number one, I have Parker's absent on day 10. Number one, F of three. F of three. So what I'm going to do but f of 3 equals wherever there's a the x, that's where I'm going to plug in. Wherever there's a variable, I'm going to plug a 3 in. 3 squared minus 2 times 3 minus 8. Y'all remember doing that last year? Order of operations. 3 squared is 9. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. That gives me negative 5. That's my output. My input is 3. My output is negative 5. Box your answer. Now, if I asked you to put that in order pair, how would you express this as an order pair? Um, negative 3, I mean 3, negative 5. Because if I was to graph that relation, that's what it is, is it? Okay. We're just looking at stuff from a lot of different views this year, pre -cal. You're trying to bring everything you learn together in this course. All right, we're going to go to C. C. 2A minus 1. So I got F of 2a minus 1 equals, I'm going to take 2a minus 1 and plug it in for x. Why do you think students miss this question? I want you to think for a minute. I have a lot of kids every year miss it. What do you think, Kyle? Because they don't foil. Very good. Foil it. Please don't make that mistake. And I tell the same sermon every year, and I'm going to still have three or four do it. Don't do it, okay? So, and take your time. Don't try to do it in your head. You're not going to impress me. By doing it here, you're going to impress me by getting it right. So go up here to the top and pull out 2a minus 1 times 2a minus 1. It's too far up.
When I FOIL it, I get 4a squared minus 4a plus 1. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put that in here. Now, I'm going to distribute this negative 2. It's going to give me negative 4a plus 2 minus 1. Be careful on your just basic math right there. All right, now I'm going to combine. Negative 4a, negative 4a gives me negative 8a. 1 plus 2 is 3 minus 8 is negative 5. That is my answer. My input value is 2a minus 1. My output value is 4a squared minus 8a minus 5. Okay, that was a great question. I was coming up to it. Number one mistake in us two is made. Are we solving a quadratic equation here? So you don't need a factor. But I was about to that was about, I'm so glad you said it, Cole, because that was about to come out of my mouth. Yes. Our answers, do you just want us to box it in? Or do you want us to write it as the good question? Um Tyler said, do you want me to write the final answer as f of 2a minus 1? If you start up here like this and just box your answer, I'm good. Either way, you can write f of 3 equals negative 5. You can write it like that. Or if I see it there and there, I'm good. That, I'm not that big particular, but I'm good with that. Is everybody good? All right. Number 2, we're going to do a and b on number 2. Okay. First of all, what type of function is this? On oh, number one, it was a what? Because the highest degree is what? Two. When you use correct vocabulary, the highest degree is two. What type of function is number two? Radical, because there's a what in it. you got to get confident with your names. Don't, I'm not going to yell if you miss it. That's why I'm trying to review this, because you've got to get better with this the other year. This is a radical, because there's a radical. Okay, so I want to find f of four. So I'm going to do f of four equals negative 3, 4 squared plus 9. That's 16 plus 9. What's the square root of 25? And since it's side by side, what operation does that mean? Very good. So my input value is negative 15. No, it does not matter here. Whatever's in that parentheses is what you plug in for that variable. When you take the square root, was there any plus or minus in it when they give it to you? You only do it when you take the square root. That's the rule of pre -tail. Is the answer that you get the input from Okay. The thing that's in the parentheses is your x coordinate, your input, what you get is the output. Like this is what's dancing down the conveyor belt jumping in that Scooby-Doo machine. That's the rule that the machines follow, and that's what comes out on the conveyor belt. Okay. I keep thinking about you. Remember that conveyor belt where you get the chicken and the vegetables, and out came the chicken pot pie. Okay, y'all don't watch those cartoons. All right, let's look at 3a. So this is my input. Independent or dependent? What is this right here? Independent or dependent? Independent. So I'm going to do f of 3a equals negative 3. I'm going to come over here because we're not going to do that right there. 3a squared plus 9. What do you think the number one mistake students make here? The square. You got to square both the 3 and a. You can't just do one or the other. You got to do both. So what's 3a squared? 9a squared. Very good. Alright, next thing students do. Okay, another common mistake. What do you think is a common mistake here? Because you know you get simplifying half. They, they try to take the square root of 9, they try to take the square root of a squared because they're perfect square. Let me teach you that. You probably don't know how to do this yet, so I'm training your mind. Yes, that looks tempting to simplify, and yes, you can simplify. But the only way you can simplify is if you try to factor something out first, okay? What do they both have in common? 
nine. They have a nine in common. So I'm going to factor out a nine. Do I need to write the back What now? Yes, I'm about to write it right here. I took a GCF out. You can't take the square root of that a squared because it's connected to that plus one, okay? But once you take that nine out, you can take the square root of that. Does that make sense? You have taken it out. But you can't, right now you can't do that because those two things are connected by a plus. Okay? But when you take that nine out, what's the square root of nine? What's three times negative three? What's negative three times three? That would be your answer there, okay? Now you say, Mr. Chester, what if I forgot to do it? It would be like minus a point. It's not like, don't stress about that. I'm just trying to train your mind. Like, yeah, I would not count the whole thing wrong. But the only time you can simplify it, if you factor something out like that and then bring it out. Sometimes you might couldn't factor anything out. Like, if you had this under the radical, that would be real tempting, 9a squared plus 1, because they're all perfect squares, aren't they? But can you factor anything out? No, you can't You can't do anything else with that, guys. That's a rare occurrence right there. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, if it's like, she said, if it was like this right here, 9a squared plus 3, I can factor it. Well, you could factor that, but can you do anything with it if you factor it? So you would leave it just like that. That's fine. Oh, I, I see what this stuff is down. I want to collect. Mm -hmm. So you get the square root of 9 and multiply it with negative 3 and get the a squared plus 1 and the square root of 9. Yes. You see that, bud? Are we good on that? There's a reason I go over this problem and this problem right here. So why couldn't you put the fastest? Why couldn't you do it here? What can I do? What, Jack? Like the nine and the nine c squared out. You talking about this right here? Why could I not take a squared plus one out? No, like before that. I took the nine out and left a squared plus one in there. I factored out the nine because it's a perfect square, and I know that a per the square root of nine is three, so that's why. I took the 9 out right there. No, would it be like 3 times? So I took the 9 out, took the square root of 9 is 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. I see, I see that factor part. You don't understand how I got this right here? No, I understood how he got that. Okay, so what... what the same, like, what's the rare instance where you do that instead of taking it out? You're talking about taking the 8 squared plus 1 out, buddy? No, like the... I did take the 9 out right here. I took it out as a 3. Oh, you're talking about this whole thing right here? Um, you really don't take the whole thing out. you got to factor something out, buddy. Oh, yeah, sure. Mm hmm Yeah. All right. Let's look at number 3. I wasn't planning to get this far, but let's start on number 3. That means we can go even slower tomorrow. Number 3. We're going to do H of 2. What type of function is number 3? It's irrational because you see a numerator and denominator, don't you? All right, so h of 2. So I'm going to do h of 2 equals negative 9 plus 4 times 2 plus 2 over 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. I get negative 4. So my input value was 2, my output was negative 4. Number 4, or B h of negative 6x alright negative 9 plus 4 times negative 6x plus 2 over negative 6x I get negative 9 plus negative 24x plus 2 over negative 6x. Alright, let's think. Multiply times negative 
No, you're not going to do that because you can't cross multiply. There's a plus there. We could let's try factoring something. Let's try factoring. What can I take out of these two? Two. So that leaves a negative 12x plus one over negative six x. Could I cancel the two and the negative six? You said, oh, I didn't think you could. If there's a plus or a minus in between that negative 6x, you could not do that. But there's no plus or minus, is there? Okay, so here you technically could cancel that out, and you're left with negative 9 plus negative 12x plus 1 over negative 3x. That's pretty much all you can do with that. That's as far as you need to go. Now, you said, Mr. Esther, what if I got to this? I would only take a point if you didn't simplify, okay? Mm -hmm. Negative 12x plus 1 over negative 3x. Like what, huh? Uh-huh. You could do, well, I wouldn't change that plus to minus because if you change it to minus, you don't have to worry about that. This is just a weird looking problem right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, you could do that. That's great. Like um, Nick just said, you remember how we had the um, conjugate where we just took the um, number, um, the conjugate problems where we found a number that went into all three of them? You could do that. That's good. That would work, Nick. I don't give you anything weird like that on the test, okay? All right. How we feel so far? Feel good? Yes. Um, now, if you want to really go deep with this problem, you could go this way with it. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, dyna. You could even break this problem down to, I'm not getting there, because, we, because you're not going to have anything that complicated. I'm just okay. All right. I don't want to get any confused. Okay. Are we good so far? All right. Um... Let's turn over to page four. I just want to do one of these, see if you remember. Huh? I just want to see if you remember this. We'll really go over this tomorrow. I just want to see if you remember this. You remember Peace Wise last year? Yeah. Oh, oh, I love it. You know what? You just start working on your homework. We'll do this tomorrow. Start working on your homework. It is one through... Let's do one through six, okay? Oh. On page 5, it's x equals y plus 2 is number 1. Wait, is it x equal or x squared equal? It's x squared equal. Okay, guys, shh, hold on just a second. Let me clarify some things. First of all, I need a hand signal. Do you understand your first learning card? Everybody, hand signal to your chest, yay or nay. Okay. Second learning target, can you evaluate functions? Okay, good. Okay, on number one, it is x squared equals y plus 2. x squared equals y plus 2. Tomorrow we'll do piecewise and we might start domain of functions. Yes. Was that good tempo? Was that better today? Yes. That was better. That's the normal class. Huh? Yes. Okay. Next one, this lap.
that's what happens. Oh, <laughs> Make sure it's complete dry because I don't want to go there and look and see mud over there from some of my shoes. <laughs> At least it's water. Yes, that's a point. That's a positive. And if you have a complaint, please register it with Mr. Henry Long. Oh, yeah. Actually, we did like yell you have at no excuse. You need to be hydrated here today. Uh, so. I'm good. Oh, my God. Why do we all have no bikers? Y'all know. Attendance. Like one of your bands. Oh, like, hey, here's this one. Oh, we just passed out, so we just sit here. You'd win the fight if you mentioned that. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Kyle, you got into it with Mr. Long. Me and him have arguments every day on whether or not it's going to rain. It's actually going to be sunny outside and argue whether or not it's going to rain. I'm so glad we hadn't had an argument, and I look forward to not to having an argument because I will win. Remember that. I don't know. You want you want to go that work path? So if you did one through six tonight, what do you think is going to be homework tomorrow night? Seven and eight and some more. <laughs> so if you just want to work ahead, seven and eight will be your homework eventually. If you're just sitting in class, Lord. Yes, they are. They are. But you don't have to do seven and eight because we're going to do stuff like that tomorrow. I love these maps. Love them. It's like a puzzle. Yes. Tell her thank you. So now some of you can do your ACD practice tonight on a quiz or something, I'm just saying. So you can get your gold star. <laughs> 